yourselves. Warfram, tin ore, lithium. There is now a, a new war for lithium. Your, your, your brothers and sisters here in Uganda have woken up. They are now making uh, manufacturing electric vehicles, buses, small cars. They are making. But now the issue you have is the one of electric batteries. And I hear lithium is one of the inputs to make electric batteries. So we have got lithium here. I said no, no lithium will be exported. You make the electric batteries here, if you are my friend, and export those. Why do you want to export low value and you, you get more value? Uranium, ETC, we have got a lot of uranium here. You have heard of the quarrels going on in Niger. There is a crisis now in an African country known as Niger. I think some of our friends from West Africa know it better, Togo and, uh, and Cameroon, they know it better. You have heard of the quarrels going on in Niger in West Africa about uranium being taken to Europe. That's how I, I, I came to know recently. When this crisis started, we started getting information that apparently Niger is exporting a lot of uranium to Europe and to France. for them to, to use in their nuclear uh, power stations to generate electricity for themselves. So this morning I took interest. I said, by the way, what is the electricity supply in Niger? Before you sell uranium to the other person, how about you? What's happening to you? Now I found, I, wa I was told, there is a measurement they, they call kilowatt, kilowatt hour per capita. Kilowatt hour per capita. Uh -huh. Apparently, the kilowatt hour per capita of electricity in Niger is 51. 51. Every person in, in, in Niger is using 51 kilowatt hour per capita. Uh, the, G, the GDP of Niger is US dollars 613. Now, here in Uganda, our kilowatt hour per capita was very low, was like this in the, some years ago, was as low as this one of, of, of Niger. But now it's about 300. Still very low, but that's where it is. Then how about the United States? What is the kilowatt hour per capita of the United States? 12,000. And there's a country called Iceland it has got a lot of and other uses such as medicine, vector control, etc. I then asked them, have you had a rumor that there are some human beings here in Uganda? And maybe we can put aside some quantity of uranium for supporting the economies of our friends in the West. After that, after you have addressed my issue, I can also share with you, so that you, you also go and solve yours. But to tell me that you solve my problems and forget yours, I, I cannot accept that. They never came back. 
They never came back. So the uranium of Uganda is sleeping in, in the ground until we, we are ready to use it. We have now agreed with the Russians and the Koreans to build two nuclear power stations for electricity of 15,600 megawatts total. Imagine, just two stations will produce 15,000 megawatts. One 7,200 megawatts, the other one 8,400 megawatts. Our biggest dam on the Nile is the Karuma with 640 megawatts. The, the hydro, the hydro. The biggest opposition of our plan of building an integrated national economy has been mainly internal from some elements of the political and bureaucratic classes who perform the role of comprador bourgeoisie, agents of foreign interests, Mao Zedong talked about in China. Unlike the national bourgeoisie, who build our economy, the comprador bourgeoisie, raw material exporters, importers of foreign products that can be made here, commission agents, bleed our economy. The national bourgeoisie, who are manufacturers, hotel owners, tourism operators, professional service providers, such as doctors who treat people here instead of patients going out for treatment, internal distributors of our products, such as food, build our economy. There are businesses which build our economy, which infuse blood into our economy. There are those businesses which drain blood from our, our system to, for the benefit of the outsiders. And these are the ones Mao Zedong called the compredor. Compredor is a French word meaning agent, agent of. Therefore, we, the raw materials producers, need to conduct internal struggles in our respective countries to add value to these raw, mat raw materials, including coffee, so that we earn more from our state and create more jobs for our youth instead of dying in the Mediterranean, Mediterranean going to, to Europe. We also need to sensitize our partners in the countries that have been buying our raw materials at same slave prices, that their economics is defective. What will the USA or Europe or Asia lose if Africa sells added value coffee to them instead of the raw materials of the raw material form and earn more money? What if the value addition is done to other raw materials like copper, gold, iron ore, lithium, etc.? Money to Africa will mean higher purchasing power for Africa. The Africans who now lack electricity will be able to afford to pay for electricity. Where will the turbines come from, the ones for generating the electricity? Will they not come from Europe, USA, Russia, China, or from other partners? So what we are proposing by adding value to our raw materials will mean putting more purchasing power in the hands
of, 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 of the Africans. But there is, a, there is a page, I jumped in my speech. Allow me to, to, not, to not to leave it out. Now, because of this hemorrhage from Africa, because of these raw materials, that's why the economy of Africa is stunted. African economy is stunted. I had jumped this very sorry, very sorry. That's why the economy of Africa is stunted. Somebody from stunted growth is somebody who can't grow. The GDP of the whole massive African continent with a population now of about 1.5 billion people is US dollars 2.7 trillion. What are the GDP sizes? 